This episode is sponsored by Wacom, Wacom Wacom.com. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Face the Truth. I want to give a special shout out to Wacom for being so cool and being so gracious as to give away a 13 inch Cintiq per episode. It's so awesome. And starting now, they'll be giving one person per episode their brand new 16 inch Cintiq. So thank you Wacom. Also, there will be some cool things happening soon with another possible sponsor, Adobe. So that's going to be pretty damn awesome too. I hope everyone out there is doing well. Been crazy here on my end. I finally finished an oil commission that I've been working on for a bit now, so that feels good to be done with that. Starting a fun cover today for the Washington Examiner. Final is due in a couple days, so keep them busy, which is good. My guest this week is an incredible artist, all-around master of form with a hunger for knowledge, always pushing and challenging himself, a true artist in every sense of the word. I think you will really enjoy our talk. It was inspiring and fun talking with him. We had so much fun talking, actually, that we ended up talking for about two hours after uh, we stopped recording. No joke. (laughs) So with enormous respect, please welcome Mike Marino. Cool, bro. But but yeah, uh, ready when you are, man. Because we're we're, we're rolling. (laughs) So, Mike, Hello, y'all. thank you so much for, for doing this, man. This is awesome. I've known you for a few years online, but we've never actually met yet in person. Some, hopefully one of these days I'm going to get over to New York um, and hang out. But, but uh, yeah, I'm so excited to have you on this. You're an you're insanely awesome artist. Um, I'm, I just, your, your Instagram, for one thing, for me personally, <laughs> is just so much fun. I'm always uh, showing people. It's just it's amazing watching your process and seeing everything that you're doing. Um, but yeah, man, thanks for doing this. It's, it's, you know, I have personally have a lot of questions just about, you know, everything that you, that you do, but, but, uh, yeah, thanks for doing this, man. Yeah, dude, of course, man. I'm, uh, you, you know, it's funny. I think we, I think we were first speaking maybe in like 2004 or something like that. It was a, it was a while ago. I, and you did some drawings for me too, at some point, like yeah. of like Panda or something like well, that. Well, I did, um, right? remember that? Oh yeah, I actually forgot about that one. Um, it was like a kung fu panda thing. Yeah, for um, remember that thing? Yeah, <laughs> remember I, that? I totally forgot about that. That was for Broadway. Yeah. Uh, something with, yep. like they were gonna do like a kung fu panda Broadway, but it, I guess it didn't happen. But yeah, that was actually weird because mm-hmm. I had to tr- try to draw kung design kung fu panda, but at, at human f- you know form. So exactly. how do you how do you make a man fit in that weird ass you know character design? Yeah. Uh, so that was that was interesting, but no. The one thing I think um, that the one thing I, that you were talking about, I think, was um, what was that movie? I, it was what something with Will Smith. I, I did some gross leeches, like leech designs or something. Oh God, I forgot about that and, one and too. I, and I Remember made that? I gave the leeches like little penises, and you're like, we don't need that. <laughs> <laughs> we always need penises somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know that's your secret, Jason. Yeah. I think that yeah. there's penises hidden everywhere in yeah. all your work. Yeah, it's ev- <laughs> everywhere. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah I man. think that may have been I Am Legend. Was that I Am Legend? Oh no, that was. Um, I don't remember. Okay, I know that this was the worst film ever made. Oh yeah. <laughs> it vo- voted the worst film oh, right. ever. Oh, made. I know what you're talking about. I know which one. Um, it's the one with it's Will Smith and his kid is in it, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So it really wasn't their fault. <laughs> so so you could you could imagine. Um, why it was bad it was outside of his awesome son Jaden and, and Will himself, which are like awesome people. Yeah, and great. He's a great. And Will is a great actor. It just an M Night Shyamalan film all went wrong. So oh, that's they, right. It, it was it M Night Shyamalan. Uh, oh yeah, right. Yeah, that dude. Like I haven't seen the the latest movie yet. Um, the the Mr. Glass or whatever it's called. Um, I've heard it's okay, but. That guy, like he, he's basically he made some just some killer movies, and then all of a sudden, just a bunch of like, what are you doing? Kind of movies, and then right. uh, I heard that you know I saw the Split movie, which was pretty good. But uh, speaking of movies, just in, just to, as an introduction here, so people that don't know, um, they should know who you are by now. But um, uh, you've you've worked on so many things. I made a little list here just to read off, just because I'd like to talk about some of these. But uh, True Detective. Sure, um, True Detective, The Irishman, The Girl on the Train, American Ultra, Birdman, Night at the Museum, Black Swan, Boardwalk Empire, which is one of my favorite fucking shows, The Wolf of Wall Street, The Wrestler, The Dictator, I Am Legend, 
Um, and there's there's tons more. Also, uh, you know, we got we got to talk about Heidi Klum because that's some weird shit. <laughs> um, but um, but yeah, man, it's it's so awesome. Um, I would love to just to know a little bit about how you you got started in this whole thing. Um, you're in New York, right? Like, in are you in uh, Manhattan or? So I'm um, right. My studio is actually in New Jersey, which okay. is literally right on the border of New York City. Okay. So so uh, Manhattan is it's just you know I don't know if you know about it, but it's a pretty small island, and there's mm-hmm. boroughs outside of it, like the Bronx and Queens and Brooklyn and stuff. Yeah. And then. It's not technically a borough because it's another state, but it's kind, it kind of is. Jersey is right not on top of New York City. Yeah. So there's a couple of um, – it's just divided by a little river, and I, I'm on one side of that. You know, yeah, that. I, I did um, – I, a couple of years ago, I was on a – there were there was a um, CMT TV show called Tattoo Titans. Then they had me as a guest judge on the show, and I think it's in exactly the same place you were talking about. Because when they, oh, cool. they, said, yeah. uh, they said it was in New York. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, when we're driving there, I'm like, this is this is Jersey, but it's like literally <laughs> right over uh, the bridge or whatever. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm in, I'm actually in Englewood, New Jersey, and this is where John Travolta grew up in this town. Oh, cool. Um, who is a friend of mine and who I've worked on a bunch of movies, and you know, he's he's come to back to the town to visit. He's been in my studio, so he know, he knows all the geography, everywhere to go. Oh, that's um, cool. And uh, Eddie Murphy had a house here. There's a lot of like, uh, it's a lot of people live here, so, so it's so it's so close to the city. Yeah. Um, and my studio is pretty big, so there's no way I could have had it in Manhattan. That's what I was wondering. I was curious about that because you know, it's I was trying to imagine what this place would be like in Manhattan because Manhattan's gone bonkers. There's no way yeah. it could have existed. <laughs> it's it's like it's like uh, the studio I have is about it's roughly around seven thousand square feet. Mm -hmm. um big ceilings and mezzanine and all this stuff and uh if if i had this in new york city you know it would be like a million dollars a month you know there's no way i could have ever (laughs) yeah i don't think it exists i mean the only things that are like that are like the apple store you know which yeah i i'm not i'm not rolling that high you know so jeez um, yeah that's true that would be insane uh i mean a friggin donut shop's probably a million dollars a month in manhattan (laughs) yeah i don't know how they do it I mean, there's got to be a lot of like covert businesses because like you see some of them, they're like this dumpy little store. It's like, how do you afford to pay anything? Here? Yeah. So it's, no, it's really, get it. I'm sure it's like that Chicago too. I'm, it depends. You know? Yeah. It depends on where you're, where you, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're downtown Chicago, you're going to be paying a lot of money for anything basically. Um, right. But yeah. So when, when you, what, I mean, how long have you been in this um, as far as, I mean, I guess what I'm curious about is just your beginnings in this because you've, you've come so far. You're, you're still a very young guy and you've done so much already. Um, how the hell did you do it? <laughs> I mean, obviously you're awesome. I'm, I'm curious. Um, I'm not just, not just like, Oh, how did you, how did you learn to draw good? You know, that's not yeah, what right, I mean. Right. I just right, mean right. like you, you obviously um, have been doing special effects and stuff. I imagine since you were like a kid and yeah. you know, I'm curious yeah. to just, you know, how that developed. You know, well, I think it's kind of like how anyone really gets in the business, really. I mean, it's kind of like you're a kid and you're sort of, you know, become obsessed with something. And, you know, you're like, OK, you know, it's probably how like how you grew up, like, oh, my God, this illustrator is fucking amazing. You know, this this guy's incredible, you know. So so I, you know, I saw um, the elephant man when I was like four years old, mm. you know, mistakenly saw that film, you know, like <laughs> which, you know, my parents didn't know anything because HBO like basically first came out at that time and they only played like 20 movies or something over and over again yeah. So it was like, <laughs> you, you know, there'd be like Star Wars. There was like the elephant man There was like all these movies that they kept repeating. Yeah, so when I was a little kid like really young The elephant man was always on and it was this <laughs> fucked up David Lynch film It was yeah. black and white and you know, you have this grotesque dude who's so sad and it looks so real yeah. and the guy who did the makeup was uh, Christopher Tucker an English makeup guy and I didn't know any of that um, so I was like oh my god I'm scared of this dude he's completely weird looking and I'm scared so <laughs> it and I literally psychologically affected me so much that back in the day they used to have like the TV guide or whatever and every month they would have in the back 
of there, what was playing that month. So I would look go immediately to E, see if <laughs> the Elf Man was playing, and then I would scratch it out of the fucking TV guide. So I was like, <laughs> okay, I don't even want it to exist in the TV guide. So I'm scratching the fucking thing out, scratch it out, and I was like so deathly afraid. So a few years later, um, Michael Jackson's Thriller comes out, um, and we're talking like 84, 83, something like that, or 82. I don't even remember when that was. And I was still really a, a little kid. Um, <laughs> but then they showed Rick Baker, who, you know, they go behind the scenes and they do the making of Thriller. And they show this guy named Rick Baker, who's a makeup guy. Yeah, who I know. Who's so. gluing a zombie makeup on himself. And yeah, he's, he's awesome. the one gluing everything to, you know, Michael Jackson. And they go through... <laughs> a bit of the process of how he built it all and how he made it. And I, I was obsessed with it. And I was like, oh my God, this is how they made the elephant man. And this is how they made a werewolf on Michael Jackson. And holy shit, this is crazy. You know, so I learned who Rick Baker was and I learned who Rick Baker idolized, which was a guy named Dick Smith. And I found out like, how did Rick get in the business? How did he learn how to do this? So I kind of tried to mimic yeah. what that, that was like, you know, so I found out who um, Dick Smith was and Dick Smith was a makeup effects genius who was responsible for the effects in The Exorcist mm. and he built the rotating dummy head that, of Linda Blair that spins around and the vomiting device and all this like really amazingly seamless, uh, undetectable work that it was a magic trick, really. They couldn't really figure out how Dick Smith did what he did. It looked so real. So I reached, I actually reached out to Dick Smith. I found his address, and I wrote him a letter, and I sent my portfolio to him when I was in my late teens. And, um, and I've always been, like, practicing in my bedroom since I'm a kid anyway, like makeup, and, but nothing professionally, just learning how to sculpt on my yeah. own and learning how to – you know, I was drawing and doing as much as I could, you know, on my own. And then I found out, okay, who are the people in the business? Who are the best people? You know, and I reached out to them. I reached out to Dick Smith and he wrote me back pretty quickly said, you know, please call me. Thank you for your portfolio. You know, please call me anytime except dinner, you know, 630, <laughs> 730. And I was like, holy fuck. Oh my God. I was like freaking out. That's awesome. <laughs> so I call, I called this guy an idol of mine mentor yeah. and fully talked to me and I was, you know, in still in high school, talked to me about makeup and you know, how to solve a problem or he talked to me for hours Yeah, on the phone, just this random kid, you know, That's it, was awesome. ama it was amazing. I mean, the guy yeah. was, think about it now. Think about you're at the height, you're busy. Uh, I'm, I'm, pretty successful guy right now. I'm busy about these projects and things. Imagine taking the time to talk to a kid for two hours on the phone. Yeah. And not just me. He's done that to many great talents. Yeah. And they all, he, and he just took time and did that. I mean, that guy was like a saint of makeup effects because when he was growing up and learning how to do this, no one would tell him anything. It was so <laughs> secretive in the 1940s that no one knew. They were like, okay, well, your work is good. This is what they would tell him. Your work is good, but you got to be born in this business. You cannot, you, you're wasting your time. Mm. This is when TV first started in the 1940s. Yeah. NBC was the first TV channel. So he said, if I ever learn how to do this, I'm helping anyone that wants to know. So That's awesome. it was amazing. So I fell into that and uh, he helped me and encouraged me really more so yeah. than anything. And it drove me to learn more and be better and go, okay, this is serious now. Now I need to be good. Yeah. Cause I'm going to show it to him and I want to impress him. So. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's amazing. And, and that's how it started really. <clears throat> That's really cool, and and you you said before when we were talking that you know you st started off like with just like you know in like a one bedroom and then slowly built up and so I mean it's you know that that's one thing that's that I love about talking to all different kinds of artists is just you know the you know it, it's it's like there's always going to be a struggle and there's always going to be a fight uh, to get where you want to go but you have to you know if it's your passion if it's what you want to do you're going to go for it you know um, right and you've definitely. Um, 
I mean, it's incredible uh, just the amount of not even not even the amount of different clients. I mean, you've worked with like Scorsese and I mean, all kinds of different people. It's just amazing. But your your level of detail in the work that you're doing and just, you know, I love like, like, for example, I love seeing some of the uh, like little videos that you'll share of like someone just got slit. And, and it looks super <laughs> real and all of a sudden you, you, like there's like blood kind of coming out and it's but it, but it doesn't look you know and i've seen a lot of special effects where you're like oh that's just terrible but it always looks disgusting and there's what one thing i love to do is i love to find some of those videos and like play them for my daughter my my 12 <laughs> my 12 year old yeah, that's not allowed <laughs> and, and she's like she's like Oh no! She like freaks out. I'm like, it's not real. It's not real. Uh, but I always try to trick her. Um, That's funny. But uh, she, you know, because she's like really, uh, she, I don't know, she's really into like, like for example, the stuff that you've done with Heidi Klum. So she, I, I, I always tell her, it's the same, same guy that did that. And so it's it's just special effects. She's like, oh, what's well, gross, Dad? You know why she only that? But um, so so it's, funny. It's, it's incredible though. Um, just like the amount of detail and. And even you know some of my favorite things that you do is when you, you when you make people um, look really 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 old like you've done that with Heidi Klum you've done it with like Ben Stiller and a bunch of different people but that you know it's one thing to do like the horror looking things or whatever but that to me as an illustrator as an artist someone who studies people and paints people the the flawlessness in that is what's in, it's mind blowing to me um, <laughs> I mean. When well, that's what I think about your work, you know. So I look at your stuff and I'm like, how the hell did he draw that? And I'm, holy shit, you know. I'm looking at, you know, for me, I look at things as, um, you know, in a sculptor's eyes. Yeah. And you you may look at that that way as well, but you maybe more so as an illustrative way, you know, a two dimensional way. And I'm yeah. very tactile and the roundness of everything and the feel of everything is. Yeah where I'm coming from. So, you know, as far as illustration, I mean, my illustrations, I can draw, but it's not like how I can sculpt. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's just due to, you know, what we do for a living and practice and all oh, that yeah. kind of, because it's all really the same. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're only working in light, Yeah. you know, yeah. we're both, uh, you know, where's this highlight? What am I seeing? What can I get away with? Mm -hmm. You know, like I look at, all the classical painters and sculptors and say like, okay, like Sargent, you know, it's like, okay, <laughs> he's using like so many limited strokes and colors and he's putting this sloppy paint on in this very perfect way that is, yeah, <laughs> you're looking at it in this way where it's like, if you added and refined this, it's less good. Mm -hmm. and the life is still in it you know so i always try to do that when i sculpt too i yeah how what can i how do i not overly refine what i'm doing and still get the effect if not l not lose the life in it mm -hmm. yeah uh, that's a that's a key that, yeah like, like when you're roughing a sculpture out it always kind of looks more alive and better than when you're refining it and smoothing it out and all that kind of mm -hmm. a thing so yeah I, I battle with that thing but what's know? what's probably hard for you too though is that you know, like, like for example, this oil painting that I'm working on right now, I, like, Sargent is probably my favorite painter, um, and I, I, and I think it's because I get so angry when I see his work, and I, and, I, and not angry only, but also excited and inspired, but just frustrated too because of, you know, how, just like you, you stand back from a painting and it just has this. Uh, just this amazing realism to it, but yet it's still very painterly. But then you walk up close to it, and the hand is like three brush strokes, or you know, right. the, the, the arm, like from from a distance, it looks like a totally real coat with the folds. And you get up, and it's just like like a zigzag, and it's just in the perfect. Everything's perfect about it. And I right. want to like shoot myself in the face. Um, it's but, effortless. It looks yes. effortless. Yeah. But, but then again, like like the the oil paint I'm doing now, like. Um, you know, I realized when I was working on this one in particular, I had a lot of fun with it. And I think it's turning out pretty cool, but it's like the client is expecting way more refinery. You know what I mean? Like they're expecting, right, right. like I can't just go like, like a quick thing for like a fold. No, I have to like actually render around and the lighting and make it all, you know, 
it, it, so it's a lot more um, technical um, than what Sargent would do, but he still pulls it off in a way better way. <laughs> right. Like, so, but you got to think like <laughs> this, like, uh, you know, if Sargent and he dealt with this too, you know, with the strap on the woman and the fucking all this shit, oh, like yeah. this guy, they don't want that. So you got to repaint it, whatever, you know, like yeah. he dealt with clients too. I mean, in fact, he hated painting for, Oh yeah. The portraits of people at a certain point, and it was like, "This is shit." I fuck. How? Yeah. His mentality probably went, "How fast could I possibly do this mm. and like create <laughs> a true. style That's out true. of this and create yeah. a style out of it and sell myself to it?" So, honestly, if that person, your client, if Sergeant painted for your client in his way, would that client be mad? I don't know. I don't know either. I don't think so. I don't know. <laughs> I think it's all mental. Yeah. I think it's, I think is, it should be true to what you want to do. So if you want to paint like Sargent, I feel like you should. And the client would take it because it, this is confidence. Yeah. And it's not something that you have to be forced into. And I, but I've dealt with that in my business too, because essentially we are, um, you know, we're, we're for hire at request artists, you know, we're not mm -hmm. like, you know, a guy in the fucking field painting <laughs> or sculpting something for ourselves. You know, we're, we have, we're getting paid by someone. They want a specific thing, but there's this tiny tight rope to walk and this Avenue to walk mm -hmm. down. Oh yeah. Where you for say, sure. Well, why, why do you even want to hire me? Why don't you just hire the other person that is just going to do whatever you want? You know, so I, you know, I don't know if I would call it like a, a hey, fuck you attitude, you know, <laughs> but like I, 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 in a sense, say this is how I feel my work should be. This is what I think would look best. Yeah. And I, I sell myself on that point and I kind of do what I want. And if they don't like it, fuck off. <laughs> so yeah. you shouldn't hire me anyway. Anyway, yeah. you know, I'm not the pizza guy that you call up and say, I need a five fake heads. Okay, well, they're going to be done the way I want them to be done. Or you could hire the other guy that's going to do them really cheap for the way you want. And it may look different than the way I do it. Yeah. So I always have tried to stay down that path going like, this is how I think I should sculpt a wrinkle or this is how I think I, the, the form should be because we're both working and even Sergeant and all that in form, in light mm -hmm. in, and, and whether it's hyper polished or rough, it's how, how we should be pleased in the end. Yeah. You know, so no, for it's, sure. It's, yeah. No, that makes perfect sense. I mean, like, like for me with this particular piece, this is the fourth one I've done. Uh, for the same client and so i know what they're, they're they're expecting a certain thing you know so definitely not the time to try to be you know more loose and experimental <laughs> next one um, yeah next one for sure but um so but like that's the thing loose and experimental yeah it's good to what you say yeah sergeant's work doesn't look loose and experimental no. it looks perfectly in the right spot yeah, but it's, in a loose way. So I it's mean, not he, experimental, you know. No, it's it's that that's what that's what drives me nuts. I he there was recently a sergeant show here in Chicago, and I went, and uh, I just, man, I I could have been there just all day, just looking at yeah, it's just unreal. Um, and then even they had a bunch of his watercolor studies too, which are just like what the heck? Um, they're just they're nuts, just right? amazing, man. Um, extreme confidence, extreme oh. confidence. And if, and if, and if you know, it's, and it's the, 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 he was painting from life, you know, he was outside with watercolors. It's not like you, you know, he was like working from photographs and, and when you sit there and you look at some of these watercolors, um, there's, there's one in particular where I think he was like down in Florida or something and he was painting alligators. And when you look at it, it's, it's so loose. You step back and kind of just squint your eyes a little bit and it looks like you're standing outside in Florida. Like it, it right. feels and you're and what you said before is perfect he was he captured the light of everything just amazing um, right so when i see that kind of stuff i'm i'm just like oh my gosh like it's so it's it's it's, it's inspiring right. it's intimidating it's like 
Um, it's it's all those things. But um, do you ever feel that way about certain sculptors? Like, have you seen the David before, like in person? Yeah, I mean, David really. So I'm a huge art history buff, you know, mm-hmm. and I think that's essential to where I am professionally because yeah. I'm not just obsessed with, you know, makeup effects, you know. So yeah. I, even though I know it all and I love all the artists who are incredible at being in, in the makeup effects field, I also think in a way where – um where would I be? What would I be doing if this was 200 years ago? Mm. I would probably be someone like Carpo. Portraits, sculptures, maybe a monument, maybe a religious thing, maybe. Like I'd be working for clients, private clients like that as a sculptor and work or, you know, working, make, doing religious work working marble or something. I, I do a lot of the same things. I sculpt with my hands. I work in clay. I just happen to work on movies. Yeah. You know, so it's the, um, the output is going into this different area. Um, but if it was a couple hundred years ago, I'd probably be doing who I idolize work, you know, like Jean Baptiste Carpo, you know, like yeah. who I look at his work and go fuck it's just (laughs) the same way you feel about sergeant like it's effortless Mm -hmm. perfection of like light and form and just the way you know certain cheekbones are and this you know all of it is oh yeah and and the thing is what i feel like i've been learning over the years is that what i'm chasing and i'm chasing something and i don't know why but i'm and I think every artist chases it in some sense, there is a hidden secret perfection somewhere starting as a basis, whether it be, you know, we work with human beings most of the time. So the perfect face, the perfect body, the perfect thing. And what I am attracted to are people who are, when their work is, contains that secretive knowledge mm, yeah. that may be, may be known or it may be subconscious. So I look at someone like Carpo and go, he understands the secret form inside of everything he does, even though all of them are unique portraits to them, to the, the sitter, it still contains this, cheekbones and eye socket things and you know we change yeah. the lighting all is there still there all of it but it's made in a non-tight effortless way where literally you can still see fingerprints in the shit so it's like <laughs> that I, I, where i learned i don't use tools like i l- use a very small amount of tools And uh, I teach a class every so often if I can for a couple weeks. And I always teach the students to do not pick up that tool until it's sculpted to the point where you cannot do it anymore. So if I see you raking and shaving things down with tools, I'm going to force you to put it down. Because the people of the past, the artists of the past, didn't have these fancy things that we have now maybe technically for carving marble or something but in clay what bernini and carpo and these sculptors could do with their fingers alone is still better than anything that anyone can do now with the most modern tools so what are we missing hmm. yeah that's what funny. is wrong yeah what is different <laughs> it's knowledge of form yeah in painting in light color, color is form too, in some sense, you know, mm-hmm. you can get confused with color, right? Being something bright in a scene. And is it the shadow or is it the color? Like there's, there's things that you deal with probably all the time, but when you understand form in its basic rudimentary sense, mm-hmm. it is more helpful than anything that's confusing you in that realm 
yeah. because you can be confused and I can be confused with detail, crazy detail. But if the form is not correct from a distance from the yeah. corner of the room, it's wrong. Yep. Yeah. For, you know, so for sure. <laughs> and and in and in what I do is a strange thing because I a lot of the time I have to work from a life cast. So I'm working from an actor's face and I'm adding clay to that face. And I have to now not only balance what I'm adding and ba and balancing on the the limitation of a life cast, I'm adding only what I feel like it needs. Mm. So my my appliances are strange. An eye bag may be half an eye bag in the little thing here. Mm. And typically maybe someone may do an entire eye bag and a whole cheek piece or something. And I may say, oh, I don't need that extra thing that affects my form of my character. I only need this part and this part and this section as a whole. And I look at it from a distance and does that feel right? That feels right. Okay. And I break down what I'm doing. So that way they're not, they're not wearing this giant piece on their face. They're just wearing exactly. the, the necessary, the, you know, the necessary. That's, a, that's really interesting. So that's, yeah. what, that's what I was and, curious and about. See here, this is Mahershala yeah. Ali. So I can kind of move it closer and kind of see. So this is just pieces that are now glued on to his life cast. But this now represents the sculpture of what on True Detective what was done. Uh, it's a little damaged, but you can kind of see how thin some of this stuff is. But yeah, I have, I have to think like an engineer. I can't just sculpt something. Because they have to be able to act and everything without it looking ridiculous. It has to move. Yeah. So, and so if that person creases and has all this stuff, I need to fit what I'm sculpting in between all of this stuff so it then moves. So yeah. it's like a moving sculpture. It's literally a moving sculpture, a moving portrait. Yeah. So, so by keeping some of this being Mahershala's own face, I didn't need anything here. Yeah. I only needed here in these areas that I've enhanced. So it's like being a portrait sculptor. How do I maintain a character? How do I maintain proper form? And then I have to make it move. So I'm thinking of all these things when I'm making this stuff. So it's a challenge each time, and it's different each time. It's I can't just sculpt like Carpo and then get glue it yeah. on a guy's head. Yeah. No, it won't, may not move. And then, and then once, uh, for example, with this piece that you were just talking about, um, when it actually comes to the application, you've got to you know put it on, and 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 then you seamlessly have to paint it into the skin and everything, so you can't tell, you know. And that's the part that's it's amazing too, because it's not just, um, you know the matter of sculpting it so it's just right but then on top of that you got to figure out how to paint it <laughs> oh know? yeah absolutely it's, that's, a, that's just it's so awesome that's what i love about because it's 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 the whole you're doing the, you're doing all, all of it you know um, right uh, but, but and i know that i you, look i look at this you are probably on a quest going how can i make this look translucent like skin like when you're painting yeah well, and, uh, uh, it, it, you know, or how can I achieve a certain depth? You want to know what I've learned about, about that in, just in the, the time that I've taught myself how to paint is, I mean, the, the more I paint, the, the challenging it seems to get. The more, like, it, it doesn't seem to get easier um, because right. I, start, I, totally get I it. start, like, noticing so much more and I'm like, oh, wait that's not good and and but like before i would have let that go and i would have been fine with it but i'm i continue to learn and push myself where painting becomes now and now it's starting to become more um where I, I, every single brush stroke it means something to me like i, I don't right, just right. put you know i'm thinking about every single thing but it's not that i'm necessarily trying to think about translucent layers and, and skin and different things i am thinking about form and I'm thinking about the correct value and color and, 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 and the, the color harmony and that sort of thing. And, and when I think about all those things at the same time, it's literally just putting down one brush stroke next to another. And it might look chaotic and weird, but then when you step back, you're like, yeah, it looks like a real person. Like, right. the, the, you know, so it's not like I'm, you know, it, it's, it's kind of, it's almost like putting together a puzzle. And I, I always tell people too, the way that I paint 
is like I would imagine it's like sculpting. It, that's the way I think of it. I'm literally putting on bits here and there and here and there until it's all done. You know, like I don't right. I don't just fill in an area. <laughs> you know, you know. Yeah, it's, of course, it's not paint know. by numbers. No. You know, yeah. it's beyond. Yeah, and but it, yeah. but but your knowledge of what uh, this experience of your career has brought you here. So the problems that you're facing are your elimination processes. Mm, so yeah. I, I, you know, they're, they're what I do too. It's, it's, well, I know I, I used to use tools a lot and refine everything and perfect and I needed to look perfect. And, and as I got, it seemed easier when I was younger. Mm. And as I got older, the work got faster because I knew I didn't need to refine something and yeah. I knew I'm, and I'm, I'm going towards something different, um, to where like you, you're not, I'm not really thinking of, you know, certain, certain aspects of something I would have thought of when I was a kid growing up, learning this thing. I'm on a totally different path now going, how can I make it better than the last thing that I did? Yeah. And maintain what we what were talking about before is this natural, secretive, basic, elemental thing that I think that we all strive for. That that someone like Frazetta effortless, effortlessly like had achieved. Yeah. You know, if you look at somebody like Boris Vallejo, who is technically so good. And compared to Frazetta, Frazetta is a mess compared to Vallejo, but, but I like Frazetta better. And it, it's because it's effortless and it, the form, the knowledge of what it is, is better, I think. Yeah. And it's not as distracted by the vein and the it's underpainting and the whole thing, you know? So what I am attracted to is the force of form and the gesture and the feeling and the tacti tactability of that thing. And I feel that we, in a sense, both try to do that. And we're seeking both that thing uh, that yeah. I think any of us seeks. Yeah, it's, it's, it's funny, too, because, I mean, like, with even, um, you know, I, I, I always look at it as I'm constantly competing with myself. Um, with the last thing I did or, or, you know, even if I'm doing a silly caricature type cover for something, um, right. and to some people that's just a goofy political cartoon or whatever it is, I'm trying to create an amazing piece of art. <laughs> that's what I'm trying to do. Right. I only have a couple days to do it. So I have yeah, to like right. paint really quick, but like I did a cover recently that's like, it's a funny cover, um, of, uh, Kamala with um, a farmer guy holding a, a bag of fertilizer and stuff and it, they're all out in the cold and the snow and and all this and yeah it's really funny like it, it's a funny idea and it's 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 kind of almost has like a in a way maybe a pixar feel ish to the to the style maybe but that's not what i'm thinking when i'm working on it i'm like hey right. i'm gonna make the snow look real as shit i'm gonna make you know i'm gonna get right. in there and i'm gonna like really push that character and that feeling and so it's just it's interesting like like just from hearing and like reading people's comments and stuff on the artwork once it's released um and then comparing the, these outside views to how i actually feel and think it's not even close to the same way like i'm looking right. at it as hey this is a painting of mine that every single mark i did meant something and you're like that's funny, you know. So right. Like, well, but but that's but <laughs> isn't it but interesting though? It it's like that's what's that's what's interesting is like I mean even with what you're doing, um, there there's so that's why it's there's so much to the to the, it's not just, you know Heidi Klum for example the the uh, Jessica Rabbit thing, the final result people are just like wow that's that's crazy, but, what's crazy is the steps <laughs> that I've seen in between where it's like wow this this was not like this was something you had to like really break down and think about like how are we gonna do this you know um, <laughs> it's <laughs> funny you say that because your opinion on the is, is looking it? at it outside yeah. perspective is so different is it? from yeah. how i approached it and it's funny an associate friend artist great artist uh friend uh of mine mike uh -oh. Fonte oh there you go 
Hold I'm out, I think. Is that me? Yeah. Okay, hang on one sec. All right, I'm going to push pause. Okay, brother. So uh, we were talking about the Jessica Rabbit thing and how you, uh, you were um, – saying how it's funny that my perspective was different because again just from my perspective i was like looking at the just the different layers and everything that it takes to make her look like that character it seemed like a lot of thinking and planning had to go into it you know right so uh an associate artist friend mike fontaine who's an incredible guy you know who's worked in my studio for like 10 years you know and uh we uh we thought about it and um, I think he sculpted the ass or something and I can't quite remember what what went on but I, I remember sculpting on the face and planning and um, thinking that I could put her eyelid inside her make the eyelid big enough that it actually extended onto her forehead and then sculpted a brow bone above it and in a tech- technical way, um, kind of have an empty space in this eyelid. Yeah. So if you look at that uh, cartoon, she's these long, circular, you know, eyelids. And I said, well, the only <laughs> way she's going to be able to blink is if we life cast her with her eyes open. And I sculpted this big lid that I knew would be empty inside. And there'd be a gap if you looked up on it, but it will be covered with her long eyelashes. So you never saw the gap. Yeah. So so she could huh. freely blink inside. And the lash extended so far, it closed it off. And most of the time her eyes are open. So if she closes, you see a circular kind of opening under here. Yeah. Which you don't see. So it was a total experiment. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't because I was trying to be experimental. It was like, fuck, you know, it's the only way it's going to work. Let's try it. And (laughs) we glued the makeup on me and Mike Fontaine. We glued it on and we glued these big, huge boobs on and her butt. And it took all fucking day, you know? Uh, and Heidi's great. She's just wants to party and eat French fries and drink and hang. (laughs) And she's so late. Like how how many hours did, did it take to, to apply the whole thing? I mean, it's always like, uh, it's never really like working on a movie where you sit in a chair and then you work on it and then you leave and you go to set. It's breaks and phone calls and yeah. things going on and people visiting and all this shit. So it always takes way longer. But I think that took like fucking like eight hours or something ridiculous, yeah. <laughs> like way too, too long. Um, so... <laughs> I remember finally gluing everything on and painting it. And we were having trouble like matching colors. And we were like, me and Mike were saying, fuck, let's just, let's use this paint. And no, that looks shitty. It doesn't match this thing. And let's just use this acrylic paint. Let's just do a wash of this acrylic paint mixed with this glue all over her legs and all over everything. And and then we did it and we looked at it and we were like, this is a, this is fucked. Yeah. So we're fucked. We're fucked. Oh, no. So we put the wig <laughs> on her. We did the makeup, and we're walking out, and we're shaking our heads like, "Oh fuck, whatever, man." Like it's if it works, it works. If it doesn't, and whatever, what are you gonna do? So we get out there, and everyone's taking photos, like paparazzi, like exploding. You know, everyone's like, "Holy shit, it's so crazy, it's so crazy." And me and Mike were like having a drink backstage like going like, fuck man we're just getting wasted this sucks man this is gonna suck so we're we're hanging out and going like oh this blows you know so all of a sudden we go <laughs> type in on you know our phones like Heidi Klum Jessica Rabbit and all the paparazzi stuff is like already online oh Exploding. my god so so we're looking at the pictures that the paparazzi are taking and we're like holy shit it looks pretty good. Yeah. It actually looks good. All these different colors of skin tone and all these things that didn't blend into our own trained eye. Mm-hmm. The photographs and the flash and everything, it like it just blended everything together. That's awesome. And it looked pretty seamless. Yeah. We were like, oh my God, thank God we got away with that. Not only <laughs> did I do some weird shit with the eyelids that I didn't know was going to work. Um, <laughs> The texture of her skin, the texture of her body, the paint. It was so many problems in our heads. Yeah. And when we saw the photos that were being 
posted, we were like, okay, it looks pretty good. Thank God. Someone's watching over us because, you know, it could have been a really bad disaster. You know, and it's a strange thing because, <laughs> you know, it's not quite a realistic makeup, but it is in a weird way because it's still on a person and ev- that person yeah. has textures and wrinkles and lines and creases and things that we all have. But a cartoon is smooth and perfect and has yeah basic anatomy and all these things. And, and it was like sculpting an ear that was smooth and a little weirder but still kind of like human and smaller <laughs> and moving the ear back and down and it was in this weird place um and cheeks and a jaw and all these things that we glued on lips and things and it was like okay a kind of hybrid of realistic and and cartoon and is this gonna work i don't know but you know it seemed to be well i okay. mean it was pretty awesome because i mean it's like jessica rabbit i mean it's like Right. Such an awesome iconic character, and to see that brought to life that way, and and, and it, and I, I see what you're saying too. Even though it's a cartoon, it you, you made it realistic. You brought it to life. It was pre- it's pretty. When I first saw it, I was just like, that's it's crazy. All mistake. It's so crazy, <laughs> man. And how many? I mean, this was for her birthday, right? She does like these birthday parties. It's a Halloween party. Or Halloween. It's a Halloween party. That's right. Yeah, it's, so it's a crazy it, Halloween party. So she throws a, um, every year like a Halloween party, and you you've been yeah. doing uh, things every year like i mean i've seen you do like a few of them at least like you made her look really old one year right and then um uh that was pretty awesome and then we did like uh shrek uh fiona oh, yeah. thing which was just this last year and we made her into michael jackson's thriller werewolf and oh all that was awesome too yeah and the zombies and stuff didn't, and didn't you do one where you 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 made a bunch of other people or uh, models look like heidi klum yeah, that was another one we did, which I wasn't my favorite thing. It was I knew going in, it was like an impossible thing to do, um, because you know you're working with different body types, different eye spacing on like uh, models that we tried to went through so many models to try to find like a face that would fit inside of Heidi Klum's face, and yeah, it was just this, insanity. This, this, this like really beautiful, famous model. Heidi Klum, <laughs> and you're supposed to make other people look like that? <laughs> yeah, and she already has, like, a perfect face, this tiny nose and this little lips, and, you know, she's got this perfect proportion face, and then you're trying to find another really beautiful girl to, like, fit inside of her anatomy and the eyes to look close, and it's, yeah, like, that's it's impossible. <laughs> it's impossible. It's impossible task. Yeah. So, you know, when we put these, we made these really thin like basically masks that went on to these models and then having to blend around the eyes and figuring out the eyebrows and the hair color and shape and all this stuff. And (laughs) it was impossible to begin with. And, you know, it's kind of like one of those things. It's like a weird idea to begin with. And then the people like, I don't think they were the biggest fan of that year because it was like, it was so much work for us. And we did so much experimenting, trying to figure out how to do that alone that like they come out and it was like, okay, well there's just like these girls that are, aren't in Halloween costumes waving. What the fuck is this? You yeah, know? It so it was confusing. like this weird thing. And we were just like, ah, <laughs> uh, you know, like so we killed ourselves to try is, to figure this out. Is this all, is, are these all Heidi's ideas? Like she's like, I want there to be uh, a lot of me around. Yeah. So, yeah. So that was that year was her idea, and um, the Michael Jackson thing thriller was she wanted to be like Michael Jackson as Michael Jackson, and like, it, you know, it just didn't work. I was like, that's I don't think that's going to work. I said, but you could still be Michael Jackson, and it'll be Halloween, and everyone's going to love it. I said, we should do, make you, you know, Michael Jackson's Thriller as the werewolf. And she was like, oh, yeah, let's do that. Yeah. So she goes, okay, now I want not just me. I want all these zombies, all this stuff. And so, so it was kind of both our ideas on that year. And that was a really hard year, too, because that's really the reason why I got into this business was Thriller. So it's like, okay, I can't fuck this up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, no pressure. Try to, yeah, impress my idol, Rick Baker, who designed that makeup. You know, like, oh, fuck. On Heidi Klum, who's eyes are closer in than Michael Jackson's. He doesn't have as big as eyelids. And, you know, there's so many technical other things going on that when you're duplicating someone, 
Yeah. Um, and then we made all these masks that were zombies, but they were portraits of the zombies that were in Thriller. So if you look at the zombies we made, there's like a weird bald blue guy that looks like Tor Johnson, the actor, that was in the original Thriller. And there's like a skeleton guy that looks this very specific way that like we duplicated them all in masks for these dancers to wear. So it wasn't like just random zombies. It was like picking out exact ones from the video. <laughs> and, and no one really like knew that other than like, you know, 20 people in my business. You know? yeah. like, oh, yeah, that's the guy, you know, from from the sewer. You know, it's like, oh, yeah, that's like, crazy. We made that mask. That's a, and that was Mike Fontaine helped me with that yeah. as well. And no, my whole he, crew. he's awesome too. I, I I talked to him a while um, about being on the podcast as well. He's he's amazing, man. Um, he's cool so, dude, uh, man. you um, so I I I wanted to ask you this about the Irishman because I am so excited <laughs> about this just because I'm like you know I'm, I love Scorsese and Robert De Niro and Joe Pesci and everything. Um, can you talk about anything you worked on or can you not talk about it? Yeah, no, I can. I mean, right. so I worked with Scorsese a few times before in the past. He, um, he directed the first Boardwalk Empire yeah. show. Okay. So he, he produced that. So Boardwalk Empire, he directed the first pilot episode, which was like a movie, you know, it was like an yeah. hour and a half or something, you know? And, uh, and I met with Marty in his office and, and I sat down with him and, and, uh, in, it was in the director's guild. So it was like, you're in a movie theater basically. And his office is right next to it. And he's got all these old posters of like all these old movies and, you know, it's all his awards behind his desk. And it's just like <laughs> him and this enormous desk sitting in a chair. And he's much like us excited about what we do. And, you know, yeah. I, mean, I think at the time he was like 70 or something and, 75 or something and he's like so enthusiastic still yeah and um i come in and i said well what about this effect and it's just like me it's just me and him you know it's like what about this effect he's like well this i want to shoot it like this i'm gonna i'm gonna put the camera here and i'm gonna <laughs> the bullet is gonna go this way and what do you and he's like what do you think it should be on his face you know and he wants to know what who he's hiring's opinion is yeah because i feel like that's part of why he's a great director is that he hires good people that want to work on the movie that can bring something to the table. Yeah. And he, like a good director, will listen to your expert that will do anything for you to make it good. Mm -hmm. If you meet a director who's like, this is exactly how I want it and I don't even want to hear your fucking opinion, fuck off. It's a whole different mentality going in building anything for a person like that at this point my for career sure. i'd be like fuck you i'm not working with you <laughs> second i don't want no input because in my field i know way more than you'll know and what is possible yeah so when marty is like what do you think i'm gonna shoot it like this and he's referencing you know the godfather and like, like the godfather remember the godfather and this and this and this guy gets shot so I said, okay, what if we did this caliber of whatever and it blows off somewhere here? And he wants to know what you think. And he's like, that'll be great. That's good. Let's do that. You know, and then the next one, we go to the next effect. And we go to the body and we do about the fake body that's in the fishing net. It spills out onto the, you know, uh, onto the uh, dock. And he's like, a dead corpse falls into the, the, the dock and it's covered in fish and all this stuff like that. And he just and I had some ideas and he had some ideas and then I built this body and he filmed it and they <clears> were all happy and and right before we filmed it at the time I had this body like in my car you know <laughs> so so then Marty comes up to me and he goes hey Mike um can uh can can we take a look at the body again <laughs> he's seen it already so like, can we take a body again so he's like can you put it here so i pulled it out of my fucking car and like <laughs> put it on the ground and like he calls all his friends over and he's just standing over it and he's like hey look look it's cool right it's like, <laughs> it's yeah. i'm like this is hilarious oh he just wanted gosh. to see it and show his friends and it was funny he's like this corpse yeah. <laughs> he wanted to look at for fun and he's just that Man, kind of guy you know he's so... like just cool little excited dude you that know? sounds like so much fun <laughs> um, I remember when, um, 
like I, I was a big fan of Boardwalk Empire and watched it all the time. And the guy with the half face, um, I, I sent you pictures. Uh, yeah. Of, cause I, I did. I made the mask myself, and I, I, I tried to be as close as possible. Um, and uh, so fun. But uh, I had no idea that you did it. And then I saw you, you did a post, and I was like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. So I sent you my picture. <laughs> Uh, my my very uh, humble uh, attempt at oh, trying to awesome. do it. Oh, it's awesome, dude. That's uh, that's your your little avatar when you call or text. That's oh, really? You have that pic- yeah, I have that picture up for you. That's so cool. That's <laughs> yeah, so it's awesome. really funny. I think I got it here. Yeah, I don't know if you can see it, but you, can, uh, uh, you can't yeah, see it. But fun. anyway, it's it's that's hilarious. It's <laughs> that's awesome, but, man. Uh, but it's so cool. I mean, that was a cool guy, Jack Houston, and he was really cool to work with and. Yeah, that sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, like, like this is this is what like like what you were just talking about is like that sounds like so exciting to be able to work on a project where, hey, we're 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 doing this scene and this is gonna happen, and then it's your job to like visually make this not not just happen but look convincing and good and like you know because there's there's plenty of special effects out there that are just terrible. I, you know what? That reminds me of something that I wanted to bring up to you. Okay. Have you? I don't. You probably haven't. But have you seen the recent Walking Dead? Um, all? like the this current season yeah. happening now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I've seen a few of them. I don't really watch much of it. I mean, it's all right. Well, I I don't know if I can take it anymore. Um, I'm starting to like like. Uh, it's one of those things where you you watch a show for so so many years that you you, you kind of want to continue because you've invested so much of your time, but every episode is just pissing you off <laughs> and uh and like, i feel that i feel there, that. there's these characters now in the new show which is it's just driving me insane because there are these characters that walk around pretending to be zombies and they have zombie masks on <laughs> and and you can see under their neck it flares out like it's and it's supposed to be as if they skinned the skin off of a zombie's head and they pulled it over and they make a mask and it, but it all it looks like is a mask. It looks like a rubber mask, and these people are walking around trying to look like zombies to like in, infiltrate different people. And it's just driving me crazy. You can't if a rotting corpse. <laughs> you think that you're a rotting corpse that's been rotting for a month, the skin is already falling off the bone. You think you're gonna somehow skin that off and put it over and wear it, <laughs> and it's gonna be convincing? It drives me crazy. And then yeah, some of them, I mean, some of them even know. have like it shows like the zygomatic arches and everything. And it's like, what did you take part of their bone off and put it on your face too? <laughs> it's, fuck, it's so fucking retarded. I don't know. I have no opinion. I know some of those oh. guys who build that stuff, and they're all cool <laughs> and they're good artists. And it's just a thing that you know you run into. Sometimes that is like an impossibility and you almost in a sense don't, I mean, <laughs> as an artist, you notice it yeah. but, and as an artist, I may notice it, but like a viewer who's not an artist or a viewer who doesn't understand which, you know, occipital bone is here and, you know, this yeah. can't come off of your skin and you know, yeah. all these things and you can't do certain things. No one's looking at that shit other than us. Yeah. There's like, it's a really 1% window of people <laughs> who, who it's, like it's, don't that, that oh, get, you know, so in a nuts. sense, it's, it's kind of like, it's a story. How do we move it forward? Well, yeah, like, yeah. I'm definitely not you know, like how do you saying spend your, you know, an anatomical knowledge. Yeah. You know, it's not. For, it's definitely not a jab at the special effects artists. They're doing a great job. It's what annoys <laughs> me is the the like. It's insulting to me. You yeah, think I, I you agree. think that we're supposed to think that you can skin the skin off of a, di- a dead <laughs> corpse and somehow just slide it over your head and it's gonna work? Uh, and it, oh, I don't know. All I know yeah, is like I the last you. couple I watched, I was like, this. This sucks. <laughs> I, was getting so I know, annoyed. but you know what? It's it's <laughs> you think of this like how many people in the world still you know drink fucking Coca Cola in the modern day of like you know GMOs and you know what the fuck's in it and it's chemicals and all this shit. Everyone buys it still. People still go to McDonald's and shit. It's like, well, <laughs> people do dumb shit every day. <laughs> so, the, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, a portion of the world is going to go, that psychomatic arch doesn't come off. <laughs> you know, so, so, I mean, you know, you're playing uh, to a different crowd. I mean, and that's a world crowd, <laughs> big, big show. It's like one of the biggest shows ever made, you know? Yeah, so yeah. it's kind of like, 
you know, it's like Mission Impossible in the 60s. You know, everyone's like, you know, you pull a mask off and you're perfect. And yeah, it, yeah. that's like totally like can never happen really. You know, it's yeah. like, can't, you can maybe make a mask that comes off clean and that kind of a thing. But like you can't make, you know, Martin Landau into the other, you know, guy exactly. And then it just doesn't work like that. But they got away <laughs> with it then because it's a TV show, you know, so. <laughs> That's yeah, I know. I remember. Uh, I remember the same. You know, that there's like an episode of that of The Walking Dead where I was. We were watching with a whole family. Uh, we went over to my wife's brothers or something, and the, 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 this episode where a bunch of zombies that are like barely can walk and stuff surround a fucking tiger and <laughs> and kill it. And I just stood up and I was like, "No!" Oh God! And I just walked away. That's so funny. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, I think, I think though, you know, it's something cool about that too, in a sense, if you step back on it and go, "Okay, we are so obsessed with, you know, reality, yeah. and you know, like this is real. That would never happen. You know, what perspective is this? Who's looking? At, it's like." <laughs> it, it drains some of the fun out of yeah. the shit it is, sometimes. It is hard you know, to so. like, it's hard. It's like, listen, think about this. A fucking bunch of zombies attacks a tiger. Cool. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. You know what I mean? Uh, think about it. Like, I would have loved to see the drained. tiger just rip them to pieces. That would have been way more fun. You know? but, <laughs> well, I don't remember that scene. But, but I, if you, I, Okay, I, let's put it this way. Um, if you had like 10 very healthy, strong human being, men, women, whatever, that are not sick and dying and frail zombie things. How do you think they would do against the tiger? <laughs> not very no, good. I, I, I but, get um, it, man. But uh, it's just but funny. Like, I, my, uh, the, my, the, my first guest on this podcast was uh, a friend of mine who is uh, a Pixar uh, character designer and art director. And one of the things that I, it, it was driving me nuts for years, and I just had to ask him about it. It's just one of those things. It's the same kind of thing where, like, uh, sometimes a little thing like that will just drive me so crazy. And what it was <laughs> was in the movie Up, um, I, I noticed that none of the characters in Up have nostrils or ear holes. <laughs> they just look like plastic. There's no nostrils. Um, none of the, the birds, the dog, the dogs. A dog's main thing is its sense of, sn of smell. And there's... A whole island of dogs. None of them have nostrils, <laughs> but, but yet there's all these close-ups, and you see the pores right. in their skin. You see right, like right. all these like little details. And I asked him, and he was like, right. he goes, well, "Well, Jason, it's it's a cartoon." And I go, I go, I know, but you put so much detail into the into the the, 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 the skin texture and everything else, and the little hairs, and and um, the, the 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 pupils dilating, and different things when light comes into the room. But there's right. no fucking nostrils. <laughs> And then he he was just basically like, "That is awesome." Yeah, I can't. I have nothing to say. I get. I get it, man. I mean, I I totally understand it. And, and you know, I mean, I guess I look, just wanted just... some closure, you know, from from the guy that worked. On, I just wanted some closure. Um, but we had to. Yeah, just... I mean, it's a style. It's an aesthetic <laughs> thing. It's a character. I mean, I I get that too. Yeah. No, I get you it know, too. I... It's just it's just one of those things where, you know, it's 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 like I love that movie, and uh, when I watch it. Uh, I just can't stop thinking about the fact that there's no nostrils. It like literally distracts right, me. Right. <laughs> well, that's because you're a good designer, is why. You know, that's that's the reason. You know, no one you know is really looking at that like you are or like me. You know, I I mean, for what I do in my perspective too. I mean, there's so many. I, I look at so much fucked up reference for you know dead people and people accidents and stuff. It's like, you know, oh. if I actually if someone says hey we need this dead body i'm, I'm kind of doing it now i can't tell you what it is but yeah <laughs> i'm making this dead body you know it's you know it's brutal like murder thing and it's horrible to look at and i have to study this kind of stuff but if i honestly <laughs> showed up with what it would look like in reality i'd have to like wipe it all off and change the design and change the stuff because like a corpse after a couple days is like a balloon yeah. Depends on the temperature it's in, but it like becomes like a, a comedic balloon fills with gases and then explodes and pops basically and then like turns black and green and red and crazy. And it's like if I showed up with this like deflated balloon man that looks like, you know, a Good. mess with yeah. no eyeballs <laughs> and lips or whatever, it's like I'd be fucking fired, you know, it's like, but that's real. That's a good point. That's a really good point. I see what you're saying. It, yeah. You know, it's, it's sort of like this, 
you know, like I was saying before, like a tightrope you walk of like, you know, it, aesthetic, real, too real, too fake. You yeah. know, it's like, how do you walk this line <laughs> of, and I think if you think about painters and sculptors of the past, think about it. Like yeah. they've done that dance as well. It's like, Making, you know, yeah, making like, people taller. Yeah, yeah. People you know the paintings. Yeah, prettier. And, yeah, yeah. I know for sure. They don't look like that. I mean, they didn't look like that. They don't look like gods. You know. Well, it's even like, even the David, nobody looked like like that. <laughs> yeah. No. Exactly. <laughs> like, and that, that's that's a totally different, a whole psychological thing, David. Yeah. Um, but it's it's not only just that. It's it's you know, uh, David the painter. I mean, he painted Napoleon. I mean, it's like. Yeah. Do we really know what Napoleon looked like? You know, was yeah. he a short guy? Or was he was he that guy? I think he looked was like Danny DeVito. Someone, uh, yeah, yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah. You know, probably. I think I think like Canova sculpted him, but we don't know if that's really Napoleon. And hmm. it's like you don't really know. It's all propaganda of some way. And like, which doesn't have to be political propaganda, but it's like propaganda of like this story is this thing, and I want people to believe that way. You know, mm -hmm. so. <laughs> This propaganda is of this body that has to look totally dead on real, or I want it to look like the actor still, you know? Yeah. So it's like, there's all these, you know, propaganda motives behind all this stuff. And anyway, so it's kind of like this tightrope. I mean, Carpo, for example, did this portrait of this woman in this beautiful dress and this necklace and gorgeous face. And he said, he told one of his uh, pupils, he said, this is like the greatest sculpture I think I've done. And then it was for a client. And then the woman came in and goes, oh, it looks so fucking old. This is horrible. I need, I, no, this is wrong. And he was like, what the fuck? This is perfect. You know? Yeah. She leaves. She, she wants changes. He picked it up, threw it, and destroyed it. And then his <laughs> person that worked there glued it all back together. So oh you still, there's a copy of it that is like cracked and destroyed. It was like, wow, I, I finally got it. You know, it's like, and the client was like, no, I'm old and it's terrible. You know? <laughs> so it's like too real, you know? So yeah. she wants to be what she, in her mind thought she looked like. Yeah. That's, you know? that's happened Eaton. to me uh, for certain assignments where, you know, uh, you know, I was, for example, uh, one in particular, there's a, there's a bunch, but like, um, I painted Julia Child for uh, U.S. Post stamps, and um, cool. I had to repaint her so many times because, you know, she her family has to approve of it and everything. And um, but right, man. Uh, but you know, the woman had she looked like an orangutan, you know, by the time <laughs> and, and, you know, and they were sending me these pictures of her, and so of course I painted very realistic, and and it's like, oh, uh, can you please remove like. 90% of those wrinkles. I'm like, oh my gosh, I spent so much time painting that. And I had to go in and repaint. Paint in the ass. And then they were like, oh, there's still too many wrinkles. And then I had to explain to them, you know, if I get rid of a lot of these wrinkles, like around the eyes and different things, it's going to not look like her. And it's also going to look like plastic. And like, well, there can be some, but, you know, so it was like this back and forth. Uh, same thing with, I did Hillary Clinton for Reader's Digest. And same thing. Can you, like, remove basically all the wrinkles? And it's like, what? She has these wrinkles, you know. Well, who is Hillary Clinton? <laughs> yeah. I think that, I think that she's got like five different clones of her. Anyway, there's one that's really wrinkly. Think about it. Look at it online. Oh, there's I a wrinkly, have, I a really into fucking that. wrinkly one. There's like a really smooth one. There's another one that has like different eyes. I mean, they're fucking fake. Well, I never. I have to look at now. I have. You just opened up Pandora's box for me. I had no idea. Dude, check it out, man. Oh my god! Crazy. I'm, crazy I'm definitely shit. gonna check that out. That's crazy. I never even people may think I'm fucking crazy, but I'm hey, telling you, I believe you. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you know what? Let's... I mean, I'm studying faces like crazy yeah. too. Yeah, so. I've. I mean, I've seen. I've seen um, uh, people, sus you know, suspecting that um, Melania has a, has doubles, and I've seen posts about that as well. And I, and there's been a few pe pe people Maybe. posting pictures of her walking behind Trump and I was like that's not her you can that does not look like her mm. at all it looks like mm. a, a woman with glasses on but if you look at the nose and the mouth that's not her you know but, but most her face was covered because she's got these big glasses yeah it's legit man so it's it's very interesting but um anyways let's we've been talking for a bit let's look at some of these drawings um oh uh, that, boy that cool. people have done <laughs> and uh can you put them up could I see them on the screen or yeah, let me know if you see. 
<laughs> you see? You, you can see it? Okay. It's so funny. So, uh, yeah, so a bunch of fans did drawings of you. <laughs> of course, there, a lot of them are trying to have fun with uh, the special effects stuff. This first one is by Anthony awesome. Lewis. Cool, man. That's great. It looks like a, like a marker so drawing funny. or something. So cool. Um, um, it's really flattering, man. Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> Holy crap. It's so cool. Yeah, this one is by Asa, um, Asmadi Abdullah. Wow, awesome. So many talented people out there, man. You know, there's just so many, so many great artists. I think, I think if anything that we can do is really just to inspire, do what we do and, and inspire, um, just inspire people, yeah. you know, to do, to well, do their and that, thing. That's I what mean, I like about doing this thing too, is just like, just artists that just want to participate and, and have fun drawing the guests and everything. It's just kind of cool because there's people from all over the world that submit to this, you know, so it's pretty awesome. Right. Um, this one uh, is by Victor uh, Gottmitten. It's so fucking cool. It's so funny, man. Oh, so, Jason, what are you doing to me here? It's like, it was like a, it's like a, um, it's like a cereal box. I can have my own cereal now. Oh yeah. It's like Gaunt, Frankenberry or something. Count Mike. Count Mike. Oh my God, that is, is fucking this hilarious. Is by, shit. Uh, Edder Gal Galino. Um, so cool. There's one, there was a submission from Nigeria, and they have a question for you as well. So I'll I'll get to that in a little bit. But I thought it was pretty cool. I think it's my first so one awesome. from Nigeria. But Amazing. This one's. This was an interesting and creative way to capture your your eyes because you have really oh, wow. bright eyes. So I thought that was pretty clever. Um, oh, I could see. It. That's yeah. so sick. This is Dominic uh, Zeilinger. <laughs> awesome. From, thanks. From Germany, I believe. <laughs> Or Austria, Amazing. maybe. Here we go. <laughs> this is by Theo. <laughs> Dude, that's sick. That's sick. I see Jessica Rabbit over there, too. Yeah. It's like, wow, oh, wow, wow, wow. I can only see a piece of it, though. Is like, there more? With just the rabbit You only thing? see a piece of it? Yeah, there's only, like, just... I can see, like, her boob. Is there more to this? Oh, weird. Oh. Your screen must be oh, strange. Um, I don't know how to show you more, because you're supposed to be... You're not seeing my whole screen? No, I'm only seeing like a little tiny piece. Oh man, well that's a bummer. Uh, I could I could see me, but I could see like I can't see her the whole image of. Uh, oh, that's weird. Um, drawing. Yeah, I don't know how to change that because. Oh, no worries, like, man. You send this to me later. It's yeah. amazing. Oh, it's so cool. Incredible. Uh, so this next one is by Lars Eric Robinson. <laughs> so cool, man. This is sick. What a cool <laughs> thing you you you've inspired. Yeah, it's fun, man. It's fun. Amazing. To... Uh, this is, not... <laughs> this is uh, by Cade Halada. <laughs> That's sick. It's so funny, man. You know, it's... Hey, it's, you know, it's what I do. <laughs> you know, what's interesting about this one is the overall style is very cartoony. There's even a, almost a little kind of strange cartoony Picasso-ness in the line work. And then what's going on in the mouth is way more realistic looking. So, right, it's, so it's almost right. like the inside is like that. It's like the outside is like this fake cartoony thing, and and then the special effects are all real. It's a very strange take, but interesting. Amazing! <laughs> I love it. I love it, man. This is a, a Leandro. Oh, an old Kapanen. version. Yeah, it's like half the, <laughs> half the faces. Oh, it's like my dad. It looks <laughs> just like my dad. Oh, it's, it's so interesting. <laughs> so cool. Badass. Uh, <laughs> this one's by Michael Crotty. Another. That's sick. <laughs> that is so crazy, man. You know, it's interesting. It must um, be that that face, uh, the the special effects in the mouth, looks almost exactly like the same from the other one. So they must be getting this from a specific reference. Yeah, uh, I think that uh, may be a makeup from um, a movie called Hold the Dark, which was uh, directed by Jeremy Saulnier. And there's a makeup in that that I did that is a uh, guy gets snipered from the back of the head. Oh, okay. And it's a couple of police officers, and he just – his face explodes. You don't know it's coming. And his just face explodes right there in front of you, and it's like – it's that image oh. right there of the guy's head blowing apart. It's crazy in the movie. It's oh. on Netflix. You can check it well, out. What's it called? Hold the Dark. Hold the Dark. I'll definitely have to check that out. Yeah, there's a lot of crazy stuff we did, but great drawing. Uh, this one is by uh, Layton Scarborough. Amazing. Yeah. Beautiful. More painterly. It's pretty cool. Yeah, amazing. Great job. Incredible. Um, 
this is kind of interesting too. This is by uh, uh, Salah Kudari. Sick. It almost man. has like a Rolf Stedman type feel to it. It's yeah, cool. amazing. That's ketchup. I just realized that's ketchup. <laughs> awesome. That's so cool. <laughs> oh, man, amazing. Yeah, I'll send you these too. Just to get yeah. Them. Sick. Um, another... Oh, there you go. Look at that. Look at look at how. What a handsome it's... guy. This is by Mala <laughs> Iwa. And this is actually the, the artist from Nigeria who has a question for you. So uh, these um, guys are staring me, man. I feel I feel horrible right now. And <laughs> my face is going to explode. Great work. Amazing work. So this is a, a question from Mala from again from Ni Nigeria. The question is, um, what is the limit for special effects artists in relation to the works of CGI and visual effects artists as far as movie production goes? That's an interesting question. I mean, it's um, it's a strange time because a lot of things are digital these days. Yeah. But I think there's a tangibility to makeup and makeup effects that are done well that um, can be shot in the camera. And there's nothing really like photographing something. Um, even though there's some CG that's so good and incredible. Um, but when a lot of the time when they're duplicating thing, you know, things that should be makeup or makeup effects, mm -hmm. I, feel, I feel it's kind of missed. And I think that is either due to a preference of a tainted director who has used practical makeup effects in the past and someone didn't do a great job and they were like, this sucks. I'm never using this technique again. Yeah. Or there's absolutely no prep time to build anything that is going to work on set because everything that we do is in pre-production it's and everything in digital is pretty much done in post. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when we're filming on a movie set, there's always a time issue of hurry up. Let's get to the next shot. Mm. So a lot of the times that there's, there's always a scheduling problem of how long is this going to take to do? How long are we going to have to film it for? So you have some directors who love practical makeup effects mm -hmm. that they only want to do it that way. And there's some directors that only want to do digital work. So it's really like, do I want to paint in oil or do I want to paint on, in Photoshop? So it's different. They kind of can look the same in the end, but there's technicalities that are different that really one may look better than another, you know? So, yeah. of course, I think a lot of the time practical makeup effects is better. Yeah. And I think it is better in certain ways if it's done well. Um, and I think CG things are great and they're better than what we can do in some instances, like Planet of the Apes, you know, the latest Planet of the Apes and stuff. I mean, it's pretty amazing stuff. I mean, it's for us to get a mechanical mask to move perfect like that is really tricky yeah, yeah. Uh, so is there's a balance you know so it's mm -hmm. which magic trick do you want to use you know so oh yeah good for question sure. but i think uh, i think there's more work for us now because there's almost a nostalgia to this kind of work and the materials we use now are so advanced that you can really do seamless stuff and um it's it's sort of like coming back into popularity, I think, from what it used to be, which is good for us. Yeah, no, for yeah. sure. Um, um, here's another drawing by uh, Adita Bahasar. It's awesome. I, that's so good, man. I think I said that name weird, but <laughs> it's great. I love it. I'm very uh, flattered by all these. Yeah, it's interesting seeing all the different takes. I, I don't know if you can see this whole image because uh, it's a wider image, but this one is uh, Sergio Vargas. Um, and I, I, it looks like you're sculpting a, an ass. I, don't know. <laughs> I can't see the whole image. I can oh, only you see can... just like, I can see my face basically. Oh, okay. There's like a, a sculpture. It looks like a, of a butt. Oh, that's so um, I don't know. hilarious. It's, it's weird. I'm not sure why you're not seeing the whole thing, but I'll send you the images so you can yeah, see. Yeah. Yeah. It looks so um, funny. This, this is a drawing by Stella Lee and it, it's interesting. Wow. It almost has like a old, like Leonardo feel or something. Yeah, Rembrandt or something. Yeah, like some old technique. Oh, that's so sick, man. Um, uh, and then I think in that one, my, my oh, yeah. face kind of is distorted on one side. Yeah, 
I think it's supposed to be like special effects makeup on there. Vampire or something. Yeah, yeah. cool. It's cool. Um, this another another take on the effects. This was by uh, yeah. Oseni uh, Sariki. So cool, so. man. <laughs> yeah, look, scorpions. Hey, scorpions, the, man. And roaches. You guys are missing my leech, <laughs> my penis leeches. <laughs> 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 I love it. It's badass. Uh, and this is the last one. This cool. is by James um, Hopenfenblatt. Incredible, um, man. So yeah, this was a lot of a lot of cool drawings. Um, let me uh, incredible. Go back. Great work, guys. Thank you. Um, am I back uh, to? Yeah, uh, I can see you. Oh. Okay, now I can see. Yeah, you. Right, I, cool. I can see you. Yeah, cool. Cool. So yeah, it's, hey, where's it's, your drawing? Uh, <laughs> hey, I'll, I'll maybe one of these days. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> um, else. Yeah, so yeah, that's always kind of fun to do that. You know, it's when amazing. you were talking about the the special effects uh, with the, the visual and the and the you know practical versus digital, I was like wondering too, like your thoughts on, um, you know, like I guess it's 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 interesting. Like, have you probably had the experience where you work on something? And you put so much time into it, and you're doing the practical stuff. And there's times where, where it blends seamlessly, and you, you, don't even, you don't even notice. Like, you don't even notice that this is practical, this is digital. But have, have there been times where you, you, you see something, and, and you're just like, oh, oh, no. <laughs> like what? Every day. Every day. You know, all, all the time. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's hard to watch a movie. Yeah. It's got to be. You know, it's hard because – and if it's – you know, just from being behind the scenes of it, it's, you know, oh, this camera sucks and this shaky camera is terrible. And I notice all of it now. You know, it's not just the effects thing that, uh, you know, I'm into. I really love the process of filmmaking. And, yeah. you know, I, I may make uh, my own thing one of these days soon. Uh, That'd be cool. Directing, That'd be awesome. writing kind of thing. I'm, I mean, I, I've been around it so long, you know, I really feel that I could probably bring something to the table that may be new mm -hmm. that may be um uh an accumulation of just uh what i like you know classical art techniques um modern things that i do and uh just the theory and the thinking behind it and i, I think i could probably bring some to the table yeah definitely in, in, in that way um but it's hard to watch a movie sometimes because it's either i'm noticing like the formulaic okay this is going to happen now or that was just could have been way better or could have been way cooler because and i can't blame the technicians because a lot of i understand what the limitations are a lot of times like you know they are assholes on set and they don't want to do what you say and they don't listen mm. <laughs> uh so they shoot it the way that it shouldn't be shot they'll shoot it when an actor is in a makeup for 15 hours they won't even film it and then they film a close up at the end of the day and it's all fucked up you yeah know? so it's it's really like I can't really criticize anybody that does anything uh, technically any artist that does it. I mean, it, you don't know the circumstance where it's 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 what they're dealing with. Um, but I it's hard to watch sometimes. Yeah. Like uh, I can imagine. Uh, uh, can you know? It, it depends. I think it's it's any artist's painting is a show or a TV or, or a movie. You know, it's it's yeah. a painting. You know, it's a it's a whole painting uh, encompasses a lot of things inside that 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 painting. And it and it's a miracle if it's pulled off in a pretty damn good way. Yeah. So it's a it's really a, a miracle. Yeah. I mean, it's that's it's it's pretty awesome. though. I mean, it's it's one of those things that I mean, it's 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 so cool. I guess like when I see your work in stuff, um, knowing that it that you did it. It's such an amazing thing just because I, I know you a little bit, but like just understanding what goes into it and really appreciating, you know, how it was pulled off. And um, and even stuff like like Boardwalk Empire, for example, I never once watched that thinking about, um, you know, special effects artists did all this diff different stuff. And that, that that's a testament to how good it was, because it's it's just, you know, like when someone's head gets blown open or something, obviously. They didn't shoot someone for real and film it. Someone did that, <laughs> right. you know. Right. But what it, when it's done so seamlessly, where it just the, the the movie has a great flow to it, doesn't stop them. You know what I mean? It's not distracting. Right. It, that's right. like really amazing work, you know. 
Um, Thanks, man. I appreciate yeah. that. I mean, it's a it's a team effort. I mean, it really is a team effort. It's, it's yeah. never just me either. Yeah. You, know, it's, yeah, you got a big crew it's, working with you, right? Yeah. I mean, it's it's me orchestrating it. It's me inspiring those people. It's it, and if I can't physically like sculpt it or make it, you know, which I like to do a lot. I I sculpt mostly as as much as I can. Yeah. Um, but then I'll have, you know, a great person who's gets, who gets it like a Mike Fontaine who has worked with me for so long since he's a teenager. Um, and you know, our aesthetic is very similar and, you know, he'll do something amazing or I'll do something really cool that he likes and we'll kind of change and what can, how can we make this better kind of thing together, you know? So there's yeah. a very r rare group of people that are like that who can, uh, pull off a really good effect. I mean, and there's technicians in the back who, you know, back of the shop in the mold department that, you know, spraying and technical casting things out and mold makers and then just coordinating it all. The people in the office, I mean, it's like a coordinating feat, just breaking <laughs> a script down, breaking a script down. Like, what do you want for this effect? What do you want for this? And then having yeah. meetings, talking, and how do we put it together? How do we figure out what you want? Or how can I come up with a way that's cool that you may like? You know, so it's a, it's a huge task to break down a script and to figure out what to build and yeah. then the timing of it all. You know, so so it's it's a real team effort. I'm, I've been fortunate to have like a really great team of people wanting to work with me and um, just kind of all jamming. I mean, it's really like a band. You yeah. Know? It's like, oh yeah, for sure. Lead singer, and I may write the thing and. I'm nothing without the guitar guy and the drummer and all that stuff, you know, so yep. it's, I'm spearheading the thing. And so it's a little bit off from what you guys do. And, you know, you're painting the whole thing and yeah. you're, you're, you know, someone else is doing, it. but it's really in a sense, commercial art, but it's, it's really like, I look at it like a band, you know, no, that's, like, that makes a lot of sense. It is weird. Like with w what I do, like, I mean, I, I you know, I collaborate with an art director or the editor, like with their idea, try to come up with something. And then, um, and then it's a matter of once you do it, you, you let it go. And you, the thing that I'm, I'm always like anxious about is how is it going to look in print with their layout, with the text? You know, you have no idea. And there's, right. there's times when your work is published and it just, oh, man. And sometimes it looks like shit. Yeah. Sometimes they'll like put some weird color that just ruins the whole thing or they'll um, or right. they'll actually change the artwork without telling you. And you're like. What? Oh. Like that, that's happened to me before too, where like they just, they change the contrast or the color, they adjust things. Um, so yeah, I, I'm always like anxious when I'm, when I'm done with something to send it away. I'm just like, oh man. And then when you see it in print, it looks really good. You're like, ah, okay. That's great. Nice. That's all. That's how I wanted it to be. Yeah. But, um, but it's yeah, a battle, I mean, man. Uh, yeah, it's but a battle. It's, with like it's, what it's, you're it's, doing it's, is that, that, that's, it's, it's kind of cool because you, you do have the whole group of people and everyone's doing a little thing. And it's got to be such a great feeling when it, when you pull it off and it's like, oh yeah, high five everybody. <laughs> yeah, man, absolutely. It's and awesome. you know, and it's, the strange thing is that like they're, oh, you know, producers and things like if it's a real success, you know, they say, well, Mike Marino did it. And it's like, yeah. yeah, but I have a whole crew too, you know. Yeah, and yeah. They always want to look to one person, you know, and yeah. uh, it seems to be, you know, what it is, and it's just the nature of the beast. I mean, you know, would it? Bernini didn't sculpt every single thing that he did. Carpo didn't even carve his marbles. He couldn't see. He went like fucking blind from it all. Mm. So he had like people he liked carving and then he would be like, fuck, this sucks. I have to fix it. And, you know, yeah. it was always, it's always that way. You know, Rubens too. I mean, Rubens has a whole crew of people, you know, in his workshop painting stuff that he wanted. And he was, he was basically directing the painting. Yeah. And then adding these, you know, because the volume of work was so enormous with oils, it was impossible to do that much without help. You oh, know? Yeah. But, but people say, this Rubens is incredible, you know, it's like, <laughs> well, okay, but no one knows the other people that helped him. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. I, that's... I think there was one guy that carved all these leaves on this Bernini sculpture that, uh, that Bernini, like, did he designed it he did everything but there was like one guy that had the task of carving these delicate things and like he i think i remember hearing like he got like pissed that like he didn't get any credit for the for the magical leaves that were sculpted <laughs> yeah. you know bernini was like well fuck you you know i'm bernini you know <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a I think that's a good way to end it right there. <laughs> yeah.
<laughs> well, I'm not saying I'm Bernini, but I'm just no, saying. No, I know, just like that. It's, it's, it's a thing. Um, but yeah, man, I mean, it's, that, it's, it's all the same. We're art yeah. prostitutes. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and we're going to get used and abused and it's out of our hands at a certain point, man. But, you know, we're, we're pulling it together at a certain crucial moment. You know, yeah. and uh, no, yeah, it's the same thing with like the you know the guys that work on it, like for Pixar and stuff. You know, like there's so many brilliant artists that individually by themselves are just insanely talented artists, and they work on these incredible animated movies. But nobody knows who they are. It's right. just like, oh, Pixar did a new movie, but it's like, yeah, there's like hundreds of geniuses, right, that worked on the littlest things and. And that's that's what's cool, I think, about the film industry too, though, is there's so many people like working to make something happen, you know. Right. But um, but yeah, right. man, uh, I I really appreciate you taking the time to do this. Uh, your your work is is amazing, um, and what I love about you, just Thank talking you. to you, uh, what, you know, just right now, is just how much passion you have. Um, it's infectious, man, and it must be amazing for the people that work with you, you know, because you seem like a very passionate, very get really excited about about the work. And it's awesome. I mean, if you didn't, you would well, you wouldn't be successful, or you'd be like a depressed person or something. Like, what am I? What am what? I, you know, what am I doing? You know, with my life. You know. Oh, I ask that question every day, anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and everyone hates me that works with me. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> it's a slave driver, man. Yeah. You know, but I mean, look, it's it's hard work. Yeah. No, it's yeah. hard work. It's not um, this Hollywood fantasy. Yeah, you know it's blue collar, blood, sweat, and tears. Fucking work, man. Yeah, like any of the artists of the past. I mean, some may have been rich, you yeah. know, and some may have not been, you know. And what would it be like to work at Michelangelo's, you know, or <laughs> uh, you know Rubens or someone? You don't know. It may have sucked. It might have. Yeah, I've thought about that before. You know, like it may have fucking sucked i mean there were guys that just spent five years just washing brushes yeah and that's what it was like and they were 12 you know like <laughs> slaves basically yeah you know it's fucking crazy man i mean i feel fortunate to be working in this time i feel fortunate to know really awesome artists like you and all the artists i'm meeting online on instagram and all these worldwide people and i'm flattered that I'll, everybody did those drawings of me and it's kind of crazy. I mean, if anything, um, I could leave this earth with man is like inspiring people to be creative, you know, yeah. and to, do, to be themselves and to do what they can do the best that they can do, you know, and, um, whatever field it is, illustration or, yeah. or, you know, be politician, you know, whatever, just do what you can do to the best pure level that you can put it out there, man, you know? Yeah. No, that's great, man. Um, before we end this, do you have anything that you'd like to promote or anything that's going on that you want to direct people to or just uh, keep following you on online and check out what you've been doing? Yeah, you know, just uh, I think uh, the best is I, I can only really show my work way later yeah. in the game. A lot of the time it's like two years later, you know. So we're working on this really uh, cool stuff now that I probably can't show for a yeah. year or two. You know, um, but I think just True Detective just came out. I don't know if anyone's seen it all already, but it just all eight episodes aired. That was really a lot of fun. That just came out, and uh, you should watch it. It's, oh, I will. It's, it's good yeah. stuff. It was re a really difficult uh, show, and Mahershala Ali and Stephen Dorff are totally incredible actors, and their chemistry is incredible, and they're playing off each other, you know, as far as like old people, young people, and they keep cutting back and forth. And it's really, it shows, you know, what we can do now with makeup. And, uh, you know, it was really a, a great experience. That's amazing, man. All right, dude. Well, thank you right, so bro. much for doing this, man. And, uh, we're, you know, definitely have to try to do this again sometime. Cause this was really awesome. Anytime, man, I could keep going and going and going. Yeah. And I, uh, I like to, to talk shit, you know, so we can keep it going. <laughs> thanks uh, for having me on. Yeah, no problem, man. We'll talk soon. All right, brother. Be good.